Howdy folks, got a simple objective for today's Wrath of Math lesson. We'll be talking about the number of boundaries that an edge lies on in a plane graph. Seems to be some misinformation about this in some of the articles and whatnot that I've read, so let's try to clear it all up. We'll start off with a plane graph and make sure that we are all up to date on our definitions. So this is a plane graph. It's a graph drawn in the plane with no edge crossings. Recall that a plane graph divides the plane into regions or faces. We'll label the faces of this plane graph F1, F2, and F3. I'll probably call them regions a lot for the rest of the lesson, so just know faces, regions, means the same thing. The boundary of a face, of a plane graph, is the subgraph that's incident to the face. So the boundary of F1, for example, is this three cycle. Those are the vertices and edges incident to the face F1. The boundary of F3 is all of these vertices and edges here that I'm tracing with my finger. They're the edges and vertices incident with this exterior region F3. Let me not write F3 so close to the graph to make it a little more clear. That's the exterior region F3. Let me also not write it so big because there's nothing super special about it. That's F3. So the misconception I'm seeing is that it's often stated just plain as day that every edge lies on the boundary of two regions, which is not true. We see that is the case for some edges, like this edge here. It's in the boundary of the region F1, and it's also in the boundary of the region F2, which is all of these vertices and edges here. So that edge does lie in the boundary of two regions. But what about this edge here? Well, this edge is only incident with the region F3. So it's only in one boundary. It's in the boundary of F3 and no other boundaries. So let's hit on the first important note. An edge is going to be in the boundaries of two regions if it lies on a cycle. That's the sort of key difference here. We look at this edge, for example. It lies on this cycle, and it's in the boundary of F2, which is all of these vertices and edges here, and it's in the boundary of F3. So why is this? Well, if an edge lies on a cycle in a plane graph, then basically it's part of a closed curve that's enclosing or bounding some region. And in order for it to bound this sort of internal region, it also has to be in the boundary of the region outside of that. For example, if we look at this edge that's in the boundary of F1 again, it's part of this closed curve that's bounding or containing this region F1. That means it also has to be part of the boundary of the region outside of it, which is F2. If it wasn't part of the boundary of F2, then F2 and F1 would just be able to merge and come together. So clearly, this edge that's on a cycle, which is kind of like a closed curve, bounding F1, it also has to be part of the region outside of it, F2, or part of the boundary of that region. We don't have the same, the same problem with this bridge, however. This edge that doesn't lie on a cycle, they're called bridges. If we delete them, they disconnect the graph. If we delete this bridge, this edge that doesn't lie on a cycle, notice the faces don't change because this edge isn't on a cycle. So it's not on a closed curve that's containing some region. I'll say that one more time. An edge that isn't on a cycle is not on a closed curve that's containing some region in the plane. It is technically in the boundary of this face or this region. In graph theory terms, it is in the boundary. But it's not part of the closed curve that's enclosing this region. And again, we can see that clearly because if we get rid of it, the regions don't change. So clearly it wasn't playing an active role in bounding that region. But I do want to say once more, it is technically, in graph theory terms, it is part of the boundary of F2. So the first note we wanted to hit is that an edge of a plane graph that lies on a cycle is in the boundary of two different regions. Then, an edge in a plane graph that isn't on a cycle, and again, those are called bridges, they lie in the boundary of only one region. And why is that, if we think about that a little bit? Well, the way I like to explain it 
is that if an edge doesn't lie in a cycle, then it's not on one of those closed curves that's containing a region. And if it's not playing a role in containing a region, then it itself has to be contained within a region. This edge, for example, it's not containing any region, it's not on a cycle, and so instead it's entirely contained within the region F3. So it's only incident to that one region containing it, which means it's only in one boundary. Similarly for this edge here, this bridge, it's not playing a role in containing a region since it's not on a cycle, so it itself must be entirely contained within a region. In this case, it's contained within the region or face F2. So it's only incident to that one region, and so it's only in one boundary. So that's all I wanted to get across. Now let me try to give you a quick recap before we end the lesson. In a plane graph, an edge that lies on a cycle will be in the boundaries of two regions. This is because if an edge is on a cycle, it's kind of on a closed curve that is enclosing a region in the plane. Thus, it must also be in the boundary of the region that lies outside of the region it encloses. Like this edge here, for example. It lies on this cycle, and it's enclosing this region or face F2. Thus, it also has to be the part of the boundary of the region outside of F2, this region F3. And indeed it is. It's in the boundary of F2, and it's in the boundary of F3. On the other hand, if an edge in a plane graph does not lie on a cycle, such edges are called bridges, they are not on a closed curve containing a region, and thus they themselves must be entirely contained within a region. Thus, they'll only be incident to that one region they're contained in, which means they're only going to be in that one region's boundary. For example, this edge doesn't lie on any cycle, it's not playing a role in containing a region. Instead, it is entirely contained within the region F3. And so, since it's only incident to the region F3, that's the only region it's touching, that means that it's only in the boundary of F3. Similarly with this edge here, the only region it's touching is F2. It's contained in the region F2, and so it's only in the boundary of F2. Again, just for an example, the boundary of F2 consists of all these vertices and edges I'm tracing with my finger. So even though this edge isn't playing an active role in containing F2, if we erase it, we still have the same regions. Despite that, in graph theory terms, it is still technically in the boundary of F2. But since it's not on a cycle, it's not in the boundary of any other region. So I hope you found this video uh, useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.